Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome to Learn English Live. My name is Sherry, and we are going to have a live lesson this evening. Tonight, we're going to focus on idioms. So let's get started. Let me take a look and see who is all here tonight first. I was just finishing up my dinner. I have a lot to tell you guys tonight, and I want to share with you. Uh, of course, I've got my co-pilot here. Bitsy is ha hopping, hopping up here in my lap. So let's get started and look and see who is all here. Bitsy, can you say hello to the viewers? I don't think we have too many people here quite yet, but let's take a look and see who we've got here. Go to the live chat. Hey, Bitsy. All right, guys, let's take a look at what we've got going on tonight. So, hello, Dwee. Dwee, you get the star award for the night for being the first student in the classroom. Let's see who else we have. Let me know, please, in the chat if you can hear me and see me okay. Please follow up and let me know if you can. Uh, Javier, hello, Javier. How are you today? Ronaldo. Welcome, Ronaldo. Thanks for coming to the live chat tonight. Alex, great to see you, Alex. And Samira. Samira, you should be sleeping. Layla, good morning to you. Good morning. So let me know if you guys can hear me so I can see that in the chat. There seems to be quite a delay. Ah. Maybe because I don't have my Ethernet cable. Thank you, Layla. I don't have my Ethernet cable hooked up. That will help. Okay, now we are cooking with gas. That is an idiom. When you say we're cooking with gas, that means that things are moving along, things are going smoothly. We're cooking with gas. Hello, Asaf. Hello, welcome. So let's see, it is 7.03. So let's go ahead and get started with our lesson today. Okay, first of all, before we start with the idiom lesson, I wanna share with you, today was a very important day. And that is because today is the day, I don't know if you can see here, let's see. Can you see right here? I have my, I have a Band-Aid right here. I received the first dose of my COVID vaccine today. So I received an immunization for COVID today. I received the Moderna brand immunization and I will receive the second immunization in two weeks. So it was, uh, it was an important day. I did take a, a photo and I'm going to do a short video that I will post on my Instagram for you, <clears throat> for you individuals who follow. And it will also be on my TikTok talking about the experience and also giving you some information on what the definition of vaccination is comparing that to immunization. So check for my TikTok and Instagram on that video, which will be coming to you soon. May, it's great to see you. And yes, Samira, another saying that you can use is I can sleep when I'm dead. That is something that people will say when they don't get enough sleep, they're active, they're busy, they have a lot to accomplish, I can sleep when I'm dead. Hello, Michelle, welcome. So let's get started with our idiom lesson for this evening or morning, depending on where you are. So let's talk about the definition of idioms first. And definition, the definition of idioms is that idioms are expressions which have a meaning that is not obvious from the individual words. So again, there are expressions that have meaning which are not obvious from the individual words that make up the complete expression. Thank you, Layla. Yes, um, and I, I did some research. I wasn't sure if I wanted to get the vaccine. I wanted to make sure that I was well informed and I feel like that was something that I needed to do. So 
I do want to call attention to those of you who are here today who are channel members. Thank you so much for doing so. May, Michelle, Layla, thank you so much for being channel members. Gertrudis, hello Gertrudis. I did not see you earlier. Thank you for being a channel member. And of course, Dwee, thank you so much. What you do helps Robin continue with his mission, and that is to help as many students as possible learn English. So let's get back to our lesson, idioms. The best way to understand idioms is to see them in context. So see the idiom in context. So for example, if we just were to read this in the blink of an eye, hmm, what does that mean in the blink of an eye? Not really sure because we don't have the context of the sentence. So here is an example. The race was over in the blink of an eye. Okay, guys, post in the chat. Once you have seen the sentence with the context, what do you think in the blink of an eye means? Let's take a look at the chat. See if we have any latecomers today. Alex, remind me where you are from. I cannot remember if you don't mind. It seems that students are slow to get back to the live, the live streams. I need to maybe um, let more students know. If anyone is in our chats on WhatsApp with Robin, if you could please remind students that we are live for our lesson, that would be fantastic. So what does the idiom? The race was over in the blink of an eye. Yes. Okay, I see some people answering here. Let's see if we have a few more. Dwee, hey, you just used a great idiom. No idea. That is that is good. We're going to talk about that phrase, no idea, and what idioms we can use instead of saying, I have no idea. Michelle, OK? OK, Javier, I think maybe you used the ñ instead of a p. Yes, you retracted. OK. We'll wait and see if Javier types in. It's very windy today here at my house. I can hear the wind blowing quite harshly outside. I don't know if harshly would be a correct word. Um, maybe the wind is blowing fiercely. We'll give Javier a moment as he's retyping his answer. Ronaldo, okay, that is fine. So let's go ahead and I'll, would you like to give the answer? Oh, okay, so you don't understand or have no idea. We'll, we'll go through that. Reham, Reham, nice to meet you. Hello. The race was over in the blink of an eye. This means that the race ended very quickly. The race ended very quickly. So let's think about how fast do we blink our eye, right? You blink your eye very quickly. It happens just like that, right? So the race was over in the blink of an eye. Oh no, Asaf, what's wrong? You look sad. No, don't be sad. <laughs> Okay, so yes, Gertrudis, the race was over very quickly. And so if you were, let's say you were watching um, our foot race, so track is a sport where the athletes run in competition. And there are some races which are very short in length, such as the 100 meter dash, that is something that a race that is run in track events. If you watch the Olympics, the athletes run very fast 
And if you're not paying attention, you'll miss the entire race because it gets over so quickly. The race was over in the blink of an eye. So let's learn ways to describe when you know something well, okay? So when you have a really clear understanding of something and you are skilled at understanding that concept. So when you have something quick, basically in the blink of an eye is when something gets over very quickly. Another, another saying that you will hear people say that is not an idiom, it is, it was over before we knew it, which means that it began and ended so quickly, it happened so fast, it, it began and ended before we knew it. Okay, so let's talk about ways that you can describe when you know something or when you want to discuss someone else knows something very well. Inside out. Inside out is one idiom that you can use. So she knows the material inside out, or she knows the material inside and out. And Gertrudis, you beat me to the punch. Okay, so you beat me to the punch is an idiom, which means that she posted a sentence that we're going to study very soon. I did not see Grace, hello Grace. Welcome, Grace. It's great to see you. She knows the material inside and out. So just to get you up to speed, Grace, we are talking about idioms you can use to express when you can do something very well or when you do not have an idea. You don't know the answer. She knows the material inside out. So this means that she knows something very well, to know something very well. Getting to Gertrudis's, Gertrudis's um, sharing of an idiom, like the back of her hand, like the back of her hand. Now, in some languages and cultures, this idiom is used in a similar manner, and it will be used as like the palm of my hand, or like the palm of her hand. In English, we use the idiom like the back of her hand. And Reham, I see your question, and I will go back and address that in just a moment. She knows the city like the back of her hand. So when you think about it, we look at the back of our hand every day of our lives as we're doing things with our hands. We see the back of our hand. And so that is why this idiom means that you know something very well. She knows the city like the back of her hand. So yes, to know something very well. She knows every detail of the city's streets. So someone who drives an Uber for a living often knows all of the streets in a city and all of the ways to get around traffic. Ah, so that means I know like my pocket. Okay, Michelle, thank you for sharing that. So I wanna go back to inside out Raheem wanted to ask about the meaning. So inside out means that you know the material very well. You understand something inside and out. So let's think about it literally. If you have a bag, which let me give you. So here's a bag. And I'm going to open the bag. I know it inside and out. You know everything about it. I know all the details, inside and out. Do you guys use these bags? They're kind of nice. They're, they're to um, 
We use these at the when we go to the grocery store. If you buy frozen items and you have to travel a distance, you can put it in here and it keeps things cold and it will also keep things hot. I, I know the material inside out. So let's take a look. Layla says, I know my family like the back of my hand. Yes, so you know your family very well. And oftentimes, if there's something that happens, you will know how your family will respond to new information because you know them so well. You can anticipate their response or reaction to something because you know them like the back of your hand. Okay, so let's go back to our next idiom to describe when you know something. And this idiom is knows his or her stuff. Knows his or her stuff. When it comes to math, he knows his stuff. Yes, Layla. Yes, I, I've had, um, I was doing a live stream on another platform and there were students who said that in Arabic, that was what that saying was. Knows his stuff or knows her stuff. When it comes to math, he knows his stuff. So let's type in the chat box what he knows his stuff means. Go ahead and chat in the chat box and let me know what he knows his stuff means. When it comes to math, he knows his stuff. And please remember students to be active learners during this live lesson. I want you to practice saying these phrases, these idioms with me, so you can improve your speaking fluency. When it comes to math, he knows his stuff a little bit uh, more quickly. When it comes to math, he knows his stuff. Ah, very interesting, Gertrudis. It's the same in Spanish. Yes, so he knows math very well. He knows math extremely well. When it comes to math, he knows his stuff. Oh goodness. Pitsy is really keeping me comfortable today. Um, I waited outside in very cold temperatures. Um, it was probably 30 degrees Fahrenheit, which I think is around zero degrees Celsius. And I had a hat and I had my gloves. Shh, Chica is so naughty. And a coat. It was really cold outside. My hands and feet were really cold. So I'm still kind of cold. Very good at something. Yes, Grace, that's correct. When it comes to math, he knows his stuff. He knows math extremely well. So Thank you for typing in the chat box the answer to that. So let's move on to the idiom has a familiar ring to it. Has a familiar ring to it. The example sentence is the name of the movie has a familiar ring to it, but I don't remember what it was about. Grace, I have four dogs. Yes. Chica. Shh. I have four dogs. This is my this is my sweet dog. This is Bitsy. She's my oldest and she is super smart and she's really good. And then I have Chica. Chica, come here. Come here, Chica. And Chica is my puppy. She's my puppy and she's the one who's naughty. She's super cute. But oh, she can be naughty. So let's take a look. Lord of the Rings movie. <laughs> My precious, yes. Um, the name of the movie has a familiar ring to it, but I don't remember what it was about. So let's take a look and see what this idiom means. Has a familiar ring to it. Okay, 
Here's another exercise. Please write a sentence in the chat box using the idiom, a familiar ring to it. <laughs> Thank you, Grace. Yes, uh, my chihuahuas, I love them dearly. They are very precious to me. And my dogs love me and do not tell me no. <laughs> they don't talk back to me like teenagers do. So that's nice. Okay, so let's see. Like, Reham, I'm not sure what movie you're referring to. Let me know. So let's use a sentence in the chat box with the idiom, a familiar ring to it. Here is the example again. The name of the movie has a familiar ring to it, but I don't remember what it was about. I'm trying to read and see here. So, <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. So, Grace, what you're saying, Grace, is that you can recall some things about my live stream, but you don't really remember all of the information. I hope, I hope the live stream sticks with you a bit better. Okay, so Layla wants this exp explained. Okay, so when you use the idiom, has a familiar ring to it. This means that it sounds familiar, but you can't quite remember all of what happened, or you can't quite remember the name. Using a familiar ring to it is one idiom that is often paired with remembering things like names. Ah, that has a familiar ring to it, but I just can't quite remember the name. Okay. Yes. So Samira, her name. Okay. We want to change that to her name had a familiar ring to me or had a familiar ring to it, but I couldn't remember her name had a familiar ring to it, but I couldn't remember Gertrudis. The name of this actor rings a bell. The name of this actor rings a bell. So that is the next one we're going to talk about. Gertrudis, you beat me to it again. Twice now. You want to teach this lesson? <laughs> I think you could. Oh, okay. Dwee. Mm-hmm. So Grace says, the voice on the radio has a familiar ring to it. Yes. That is a perfect explanation. The voice on the radio has a familiar ring to it. Do you know him? Or do you know who sings this? It has a familiar ring to it, but I can't quite place it. <laughs> this game has a familiar ring to it. Yes, Michelle. So that's when you're playing a game and it feels similar, but you're not quite sure if you remember the name of the game or how the game is played. And Gertrude says, no, <laughs> you don't want to teach this class. Oh, come on. I bet you could teach the lesson. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. Samira, you are welcome. We are here to learn. I am learning from you just as you are learning from me. So I really appreciate you participating in the class. Um, Gertrude, don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. Javier, oh... Yes, I'm sorry that your phone, but I know you're here, Javier. Thank you for hanging in there, Reham. I know that movie before. Yes, that's what it means. I know the movie, but I just can't remember it at this time. Another thing that people will say is, it's on the tip of my tongue, but I just can't quite remember. That means that, oh, it's that feeling when you think you almost know the name, but I just can't quite get it to come out. It's on the tip of my tongue. Is it this the meaning of familiar racing to? Yes. Yeah. So familiar, something that's familiar. Mm hmm. Okay. So 
guys, you used the sentence, right? Using a sentence that says has a familiar ring to it. Great job. Wonderful exercise. So here, Gertrudis, now it's your turn. Let's talk about rings a bell. Ah, oh, thank you so much, Grace. That's so sweet of you. Ringing a bell. I'm not sure if I know her, but the name rings a bell. The name rings a bell. So this is when you're talking with some friends and they are like, oh yeah, you remember Sally? We saw her at the party last spring. And you would say, hmm, I'm not sure if I know her, but the name rings a bell. Okay, so this is someone you just can't quite place but the name sounds familiar. Okay, Grace, the little hearts that you sent are so cute. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, let's learn idioms now, students, to use when you don't know something. Okay, so let's look, Layla. My sister's friend's, I didn't see your sentence. Thank you, Layla. My sister's friend name is has a familiar ring to me. Okay, so we are going to do a correction here. Let's just add, we'll insert a quick slide here. I don't normally do this, but we're just going to do this here. Layla's, this is Layla's, my sister's friend name. This has a familiar ring to me. Okay, so here is Layla's sentence. We are going to correct it. Okay. Let's see if we can get this corrected. My sister's friend. Okay, so you're talking about your sister's friend's name. Because name, name is the noun sister's friend's name sister's friends describes whose name we're talking about so my sister's friend's name has a familiar ring to me but you have it as a question my sister's friend's name has a familiar ring to me that's more of a statement. If you wanted to do a question, you would say, um, my sister's friend's name may have a familiar ring to me. So let's see how that works out for you guys. Can you see that okay? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you get to see my typing. I can type pretty quickly, but when I know that people are watching, I tend to make errors in my typing. Okay? My sister's friend's name may have a familiar ring to me. It still sounds kind of awkward, right? Um, my sister's friend's name, my sister's friend's name may Hmm, I just, I'm having a hard time with that sentence. So Layla, I think the best thing to do is to turn that into a statement rather than a question. Please uh, let me know in the chat if that makes sense. And Samira, the answer was on the tip of my tongue, but I couldn't respond and my teacher got angry. Oh, Samira, I keep hearing about your educators and I, it just makes me wonder. I'm not going to speak poorly about your teachers, though, because I don't know them. Okay, so let's get back to our presentation. So let's learn idioms to use when we don't know something. Okay, so we've talked about the things that we can use when we know something. Now let's talk about idioms that we can use when we don't know. 
Thank you so much, everyone, for being here today. I want to stop. This is the halfway point. want to remind everyone, thank you for supporting the channel, Learn English Live. Robin has done an amazing job. And if you would like to participate in his WhatsApp chat groups, please, the link is below. You can um, request to be a part of that. Several students who are here are already participating. If you would like to as well, please check that out. There's also a website, shawenglish.com, where you can take a test to see what your level is. And both Robin and myself have resources and information there. You're welcome, Layla. Perfect. Also, I am on Instagram and TikTok, Learn English with Sherry. And I have my own YouTube channel, Learn English with Sherry as well. Hello, Chris. Nice to see you. So now let's take a look at the idiom when we can use when we don't know. Michelle, that's a great one. It's a mystery for me. I don't know. It's a mystery to me. Don't have a clue. Don't have a clue. I don't have a clue on how to get to New York. I don't have a clue on how to get to New York. Okay, make sure you're practicing these out loud, okay? We're being active learners in the classroom. Dwee says, I don't have a clue about USA because I have never been stayed. Okay, so let's fix that sentence, Dwee. I don't have a clue about the USA because I've never stayed there before or I've never visited. I think it would be better to say I've never visited. I don't have a clue about the USA because I've never visited or I've never visited there before. I don't have a clue on how to get to New York and this is true. I really don't know how to get to New York. If I were to get in my van to try and drive there, I would have to get on Google Maps to find how to get there. I don't have a clue how to be good at English. Give me some tips. Oh, Grace, you're doing fantastic. I don't have a clue on how to be good at English or on how to be a fluent English speaker. Grace, keep practicing. You're doing fantastic. I know Robin always tells people, read, read. I tell students, listen to audiobooks on tape, watch YouTube, practice your speaking as much as possible. Talk as much as you can. Speak, speak, speak. Samira, I don't have a clue. It is my constant speech when I don't like to replay. Okay. And Angel, welcome, Angel. Thanks for stopping in. And thank you for being a channel member as well. I don't have a clue on what I should wear today. That is ding, ding, ding. That's the gold star sentence. That sentence is uttered many times. I don't have a clue on what I should wear today. Yes, that is a great sentence. Dwee, you are, you are so welcome. Layla, I don't a clue about traveling abroad alone because I never did it before. I don't have a clue about traveling abroad alone because I've never done it before. And Reham, let me go back and see at your post. I know that. But I know that movie before, but I'm not remembering it this time that that sentence is correct. Am I clear? Reham I don't see what sentence you're referring to, so please let me know. I will really, I want to make sure that I'm assisting you with that. So Layla, I don't have a clue about traveling abroad alone because I've never done it before. I've never done it before. Don't have a clue. Another example of an idiom that you can use, <laughs> Chris, I don't know either. I don't think I've ever met you before, Chris. I don't have a clue on how I got to this live stream. <laughs> That's a funny sentence. I don't know. Uh, my guess is you must have received a notification. But thanks for being here. I appreciate it. That was a great sentence. I don't have a clue if I should go there or not. 
<laughs> okay, Angel. Now, I would like to take apart Angel's sentence. I don't have a clue if I should go there or not. This can be used a couple of different ways. We have the literal translation and we have more the figurative translation. If we were to say, I don't have a clue if I should go there or not, we may mean that we don't know if we should physically go to a certain location. Let's say you've been invited to a party, but you know the people at the party may do illegal things that you're not comfortable with. Then you could say, I don't have a clue if I should go there or not, meaning you have no idea, you're not certain if you should go. You can also say, I don't have a clue if I should go there or not. Let's say, and here's a good example, okay? I say to my husband, does this outfit make me look fat? My husband can then reply, I don't have a clue if I should go there or not. What he means is that he doesn't think he should even answer my question. If I asked, does this outfit make me look fat? He's thinking maybe I shouldn't respond because I'm not going to win in this situation. I hope that example helps you understand how you can use that sentence. I don't have a clue if I should go there or not. Go there could be physically going to a location or it could also mean go there in a figurative manner. Rahim, Raham, I apologize if I'm not saying your name correctly. I don't have a clue on how to drive a car. I don't have a clue on how to drive a car. Layla, I don't have a clue how to be good at driving. I just started. Okay. Okay. And Javier, I don't have a clue when the pandemic will come to an end. Let's fix that. I don't have a clue when the pandemic will come to an end. Thank you, Javier. I know you're working hard. He doesn't want to answer. No, he doesn't. If he was a smart man, which eh, that's up for debate. No, I think he's probably pretty smart if he married me, right? Um, so it's best for not to answer a question like that. I don't have a clue about how to fix my car, Gertrudis. My van is not working currently. I have to take it to a mechanic. Grace, life is unpredictable. I don't have a clue which is better. Just do what you want. Yes, You're, that's great advice. If someone asks you, um, they ask for your opinion on something and you don't really know, that would be a great response. Angel says, I don't have a clue if that dress fits on you to that to go to the party. Okay, I don't have a clue. I don't really know if that dress fits you, if it, if it works for the party that we're going to. He doesn't want to say something that, yes, would maybe make me mad at him. That is correct. That is so true. Yes. Okay, so let's talk about don't have the faintest idea. <laughs> Samira, I don't have the faintest idea how to make a sentence for this idiom. Well, you just did. I don't have the faintest idea how to solve this math problem. It means I, I don't know. I don't know how to solve the math problem. I am not a skilled mathematician. We can also say I haven't the foggiest idea. It means the same thing. I have no clue. I haven't the foggiest idea. I don't have the foggiest idea how to say that in Spanish. I don't have the foggiest idea how to say that in Spanish. I'm talking about since I'm learning Spanish, there are times when I'm like, hmm, I want to say something, but I don't have the words to say it. <laughs> Javier, yes, I am. I'm not laughing at your comment. Thank you, Javier. I am very fortunate. 
I waited for about two hours outside in the cold, but I'm really lucky that I was able to get that. I don't have a clue about your channel if it will be successful. Let's change the word order around. I'm laughing at that because Layla, I don't know if my channel will be successful either. Uh, uh, Robin has been really helpful for me, but it's not going as quite as well as I'd hoped so far. I don't have a clue if your channel will be successful. I don't have a clue if your channel will be successful. I don't have a clue whether your channel will be successful. Just changing the words around a little bit. Can't for the life of me. Same thing it means when you really don't know. I can't for the life of me remember what year we went to Russia. <laughs> okay, Angel. I can't for the life of me remember what year we went to Russia. So again, this means that I have no idea. I really don't know. I can't remember what year we went to Russia. Yes, Samira, that's a great sentence. I don't have the faintest idea how to calm down those noisy children. Yeah, that's my life. Some It used to be some days. When my kids were little, I had three children that were all within two years of each other. So when they were like three, four, and five, whoa, that was... Those were some difficult days for sure. I haven't the foggiest idea how to set up this dishwasher. Yes, Gertrudis, if you can afford it, pay someone to set it up for you. Or, I can't for the life of me when I have a boyfriend. Okay, Grace, I think we need to change that around a little bit. I can't for the life of me remember when I had a boyfriend. Is that what you mean? I can't for the life of me remember when I had a boyfriend. Again, the next idiom we have is doesn't ring any bells. That goes back to, mm, I can't really recall. The idiom doesn't ring any bells is often used with names, trying to remember or recall a name of a person, of a place. <laughs> okay, Layla. That's why we're here working. And you can always rewatch the lesson. Um, that's actually a learning technique that I use with some of my private students. And that's to watch a lesson and you actually watch it four or five days in a row, once every day. And you do a different thing each day. I'm sorry, that name doesn't ring any bells with me. So what that means is it doesn't sound familiar to you at all. Okay. An additional one that I wanted to throw in here is that there is a saying that you use when you've come to a conclusion. And that is put two and two together. Put two and two together. I can put two and two together. What that means is you can make a conclusion based on the information that you have observed or things you have seen. I use this often with my kids when I have caught them either in a lie or I've found out that they've done something wrong and they act innocent. They act like they did not do anything wrong. And I can say, I can put two and two together, right? Because moms, we are smart. We can figure stuff out. Okay, so let's see. Reha, I don't have a clue why kids have to be screaming when they are playing. I just added a couple of words in there. I don't have a clue why kids have to be screaming or have to scream when they play. Samira, I saw a beautiful flower in the garden, but it doesn't ring any bells for me. It doesn't ring any bells for me. And that means that you saw the flower, but you can't recall the name. It's hard to make sentences with that idiom. Okay, Angel, I understand. And Layla, I saw a picture of him, but his face doesn't ring any bells with me. Yes, 
Yes. Okay. So guys, let's move on to our exercises. In this exercise, we are going to work to correct the mistake. So I am going to give you a sentence that is incorrect, that uses an idiom, and we're going to fix it. And that would be, I don't have even a faint idea where he is today. You'll have to ask somebody else. I don't have even a faint idea where he is today. You'll have to ask somebody else. Mm. Two and two together is a saying that's used when you make a conclusion based on information you've seen. So Samira, I think your sentence might be a little off. Dwee says, I can put two and two together because I have been busy all day. Faintest. Samira says faintest. Let's see if anyone else responds. We're on the home stretch, students. That means that we're almost done with the lesson. Hang in there. Michelle, I have not seen you for a while. I don't know if you're still there. I hope you are having a great day. Gertrudis, yes. Let's see if anyone else has any responses. Mm-hmm, Layla. Okay, I don't have the faintest idea where he is today. You'll have to ask somebody else. I'll type it here. Actually, no, I don't wanna type it because Students will watch the playback. I want them to be able to answer. I don't have the faintest idea where he is today. You'll have to ask somebody else. So if I were to fix this, we can do it here. I don't have the faintest idea where he is. means I don't know. I don't know where he is. Okay, so we corrected the mistake. Now let's try this exercise. My cousin knows the tax laws outside and in. My cousin knows the tax laws outside and in. So if you want advice on your tax, he'll help you. My cousin knows the tax laws outside and in. So if you want advice on your tax, he'll help you. All right, go ahead and type in the chat what is the correct way of using the idiom here. Perfect. Yes, I'm seeing some responses here. Inside and out, inside and out. We'll give it a moment. Great. So if we were to make some changes, we could say, my cousin knows the tax laws inside and out. So if you want advice, on your tax, he'll help you. Yes, he knows it like the back of his hand. Yes, it's it's knowing enough to give advice inside and out. Yes, Kertrudis, there's that train again. They are pretty punctual. They tend to come through about the same times. But I, I didn't even notice it until you typed that. So now we're gonna change the exercise we're going to write a sentence that is opposite. So we need to come up with a sentence using an idiom 
to make the sentence have the opposite meaning of what we see here, okay? Yes, that name is very familiar to me. I think I've met her several times. So how can we change this sentence and use one of the idioms from today's lesson? Yes, that name is very familiar to me. I think I've met her several times. Okay, we'll wait for a moment. See what students we have here. I don't have a clue if I've met him before. So talked about very familiar. So the opposite would be you don't know. You don't know. You have no, no, no recollection. Not familiar. I don't have a clue if I've met him before. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, that we could also say, yeah, we could say, no, that name doesn't ring any bells. And Michelle, you are correct. The literal meaning of the sentence would be, I've never heard of this name. But if we're going to use the idiom from the lesson, we could say that name doesn't ring any bells. That name doesn't ring any bells. That name is not familiar at all to me. I don't think I've ever met her. Okay, so now let's write a sentence again that is opposite. I don't have a clue if I've met him. That's good. I like that, Reham and Layla, great sentences. So now let's take a look at this sentence and let's write a sentence that is the opposite. I know this takes, takes some thinking, right? You guys are doing great, keep it up. She knows absolutely nothing about history. So let's think, we need to take what the meaning of the sentence is and do the opposite and use the idiom as well. She knows absolutely nothing about history. Samira, it's okay. She knows absolutely nothing about history. We could say, Alicio, hello, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. We could say Robin knows absolutely nothing about English. So let's write a sentence that is the opposite using the idioms from our lesson today. Let's see if we've got... Now remember, Angel, we want to use the opposite, okay? So we want to say that the person knows a lot. Write a sentence that is the opposite. Reham is thinking. Yes, good, great. Let's see if we have any anyone else. Kind of thirsty. So um, if you guys wanna buy me a soda, you can do that. Uh, Robin often asks for someone to buy him a tea. I don't drink coffee. This is my caffeine. So Natalie, welcome Natalie. It's great to see you. So for those of you who are just arriving, we're talking about idioms and we are reading the sentence and we are writing a sentence that is has the opposite meaning of this sentence. So the opposite and we're also using the idiom as well. So you say she knows absolutely nothing about history. The opposite would be to say that she knows a lot about history. So we would say she knows history like the back of her hand. She knows all the ins and outs of history. That's one I don't think we talked about. That's an additional one. 
She knows history inside and out. Yes, when you talk about history, she knows her stuff. That's exactly correct, Layla. Yes, so Natalie, if we were to flip that and say, you know, the opposite would be she knows everything. She knows history like the back of her hand. She knows the ins and outs. She knows history inside and out. Those are some of the examples from our lesson today. Alicia, how are you doing? Okay, friends, so those were our examples. We completed our lesson today on idioms, and I have an additional idiom that I wanted to share with you here. The Bitmoji, yes, she knows so much about history. She knows a lot. She knows history from top to bottom. That's another way of saying that she, someone knows all the details about the history. So look at the picture, the bitmoji of me in the bottom corner. So um, if you were to describe a person and say, she is a hot mess, um, you could also say, this situation is like a dumpster fire. A dumpster fire is something that you see it and you're like, what's going on? You cannot not look at it, but it's a messy situation. It's a dumpster fire. She's a hot mess is another way of saying that. She's like a dumpster fire. You can't not look at it. You have to look at it. But when you look at it, you realize, oh, that's awful. Because some days are like that, right? Some days when you're studying English, you feel like it's a dumpster fire. It's just a terrible situation and you're really frustrated. But you are going to work through it. You can do it, okay? We can all do it together. Okay, so let's, yes, Ram, I can, I can do that. I will write that down. Um, I would, I'll take some questions from you guys. I have a few minutes if you guys want to ask questions. Let me write this down. Any questions? This isn't really an idiom, it's just a saying, I guess. Dumpster fire. Dumpster fire is something all of us want to. We don't, it's not good to see, but you can't not look at it. Okay, so what you can do is, like Samira said, you can write idioms down to help you remember them. Actually, physically writing down on paper has been found by research, it's it's been found to help our brain remember better than if we were to type information. So the process of writing with a pen, it just solidifies those pathways in our brain to help us learn new information. If you keep a journal, you can write things down in a journal, things that you've learned that day, if you've learned new words, or if you have new idioms you wanna try, that's a great, great uh, learning technique. All right, let's just check to here and see. Oh, thank you so much, Angel. That's so nice of you. Guys, welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Um, we are here every Tuesday learning together on Learn English Live at this same time. And if you come back tomorrow, I will post some more homework for you here on Learn English Live. And if you complete it, I will respond to assist you. It's a dumpster fire. There you go, Alicio. Sometimes when you try to, to say some words, it's like a dumpster fire. It's it's a mess. You can't get it to come out. <laughs> I feel that way with Spanish sometimes too. Thank you so much, everyone. I want all of you to be kind to one another, stay safe, and don't give up. Thanks so much for coming. See you, everyone. Goodbye. Have a great rest of your day, night, morning.
Thank you.